to kick on here. Got two bike lengths as it stands over Tim Wellens. He knows the chase is coming. And indeed, uh, Dylan Turns uh, look, is going to be the first man to be tagged here if indeed they get back to them. Toughest part of the climb coming up right now with 10 kilometres of this day remaining. They've got about 400 metres before they get to the, uh, the top, but it is really hurting. It's hurting them. It's also hurting the chase for the time being, but the chase is at hand. And here it comes. This is a marginal advantage to say the very least and a few just wrestling into the corner here Matthews there just almost shouldering the the crowd as he comes through we are going to have a sprint from a select group I believe here let's see how it forms up but that formation is going to happen right now Ian very very interesting that Vandenberg saw the best uh, form of defense as attack <laughs> we marked him down as the best sprinter out of these three so perhaps one that would do less work go on the defensive ever so slightly but no came to the front on that cobble climb and definitely put Dylan Turns in trouble but it's Quinton Hermans who we've mentioned multiple times today is the Alpsin de Koenig rider to come across that gap not quite there just yet but I'm sure he'll make it across on this descent well they've got to keep it together oh to be honest, I think if you had a four-man, a four-up sprint, I wouldn't be surprised. Let's have a look. There is the gap. Now, who is chasing? That's the point. And anyone with teammates up the road as well, so they don't want to fully engage. No, it looks clean in that regard. What, seven coming here and then a, uh, a long strand of uh, perhaps uh, 28, 30 riders also in the chase here. 9.4 kilometres. You could have our bus busiest finale for a long, long time here, Ian. We really could look like Michael Matthews on the front of that chasing group, falling on his shoulders to try and bring it down. Only maybe three, four seconds, perhaps. Look like uh, Godon in there as well from Decathlon AG to our Le Mondial on his wheel. So some big, powerful engines in that chase. But this group not too far behind either. How fabulous is this? Kinton Hermans and now makes the bridge. What's the gap, though? It's only marginal. You could possibly time it yourselves. There it is, and it's to a group of what... Uh, it's a Matthews group, are we allowed to call it, of about eight riders here, possibly seven, and they still can't decide on how to do it. Dorian Godin just holds up an arm as if he's got a problem. I hope it, it is not the case for him. Four then out front with a very, very thin margin of possibly about three or four seconds only. It's spun out, you know, it's about 13 seconds. Let's have a look. Four then with uh, motorcycles in front of them. They all need to clear the decks. You can hear the horns going on. They need to get out of there. They're offering up a big, big hole in the wind, which these guys will say thank you very much and sail into. So the press and security get themselves uh, out of sight as it is at the moment. Not out of sight or out of mind here. And the big bridge is coming and it's coming from Decathlon. They want to get over here. It's good on, I think, that's uh, trying to come over. Won't be surprised if it's Cosnefoy either. Let's wait and see. Wrestling that bike. It's now, if you've got anything, it is Cosnefoy that's trying to pick this up. He should have won it last year. In his mind, his teammate, uh, uh, Dorian Godon, did so, and he gets over. Who else is going to come and join him here? This is fabulous. Huge effort from Cosnefoir on the Holst Heidi for the very final time. They'll crest here with 7.3 kilometres to go. And it's Tim Wellens on the front driving it. Cosnefoir in a world of pain right now. Is this Cron a little bit further back here? Uh, just wrestling the bike, trying to bridge over. In so doing, he's, he's going to bring others uh, with him. And it's a question of uh, when you indeed put in the effort because you could actually be working on behalf of those who are stuck on your wheel here. It's, um, it, it's a conundrum, if we're allowed to say that. It's Mark Hershey has been constantly there or thereabouts. He is, of course, disrupting because his teammate, Tim Vellens, is up front here, and he's doing a fantastic job of it. It's become a quintet. This is fabulous. Cohesion completely gone now from the leading group. Just too much pain in the legs right now for the riders to keep turning through with Wellens after that climb. But there's too much disruption as well behind Axel Laurence in there as well as Hershey, <laughs> who won't be doing anything on the front of that chasing group. 
he will not. And it's Dylan Turns that picks it up again. He wants to TT this away and just hold the margin. 7.4 kilometres to go. Last of our climbs is still ahead of us. It's the s -Boc only with 7.3 remaining. And a few here will be absolutely the end of their resources. And I include those out front as well. And they're starting to roll over. And Kyra Rao now make the big, big dig. This is very late. Who oh, is this? Is it Gonzalez? Let us wait and see. No, it is uh, Chapeda. Mentioned him earlier. He was very much involved within the climbs, and Chapeda has actually got a margin. He's going to come over to these guys. Now, don't be surprised if he doesn't wait up and just goes by. He's had a very quiet day, but in the thick of the action as well. A strange, strange scenario that you get on days like this, Ian. It's just riders coming across in ones and twos right now. But again, everyone's sitting up and looking around. Israel Premier Tech rider trying to come across as well. That would make it two from that team at the front. Put them in prime position. Let's wait and see if they get there. This is uh, magnificent. Dylan turns up front, who is uh, indeed coming over to join. Fabulous. It's uh, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Blackmore's doing it again. We talked about him earlier. Looks very, very strong. I don't know whether this is Dylan Turns saying I'm just about to run out of resources. And Blackmore gets, uh, gets the trip. Who else is coming to join as well? Finally, will they have some uh, car, uh, hand in the game here with Axel Laurence? That's a name that they must fear up front. 6.3 to go. If, you have, if you're a gambling person, you'd say he'd possibly make it. But how much do they fear him? They'll be being told at the moment he's coming over here, Ian. Looks like his legs just starting to go. The telltale signs of looking round and seeing the gap behind. But there's EFA Education, Easy Post Rider just coming up to him. And looks like that gap's going to be a bit too much for him to come across. Chapeda's in the gang. This is fantastic. Uh, Cosnefoy, Hermans, Van Berg, Tim Wellens, Dylan Turns, Joe Blackmore and Chapeda. Great to see Blackmore here as well. I don't know whether that is uh, that will give a little bit of respite to Dylan Turns, but he is still doing a big one. This is fantastic. Now, what's the gap? Camera will pan back and give you a look-see as to the scenario, and they've flown. There doesn't seem a concerted effort with 5.4 kilometres to go. The, the trying is now, and Arkea BMB just uh, trying to get a free ride over, I think, with UAE and no no game to be played here. And in fact, nobody wants to pick this one up because they feel like they're going to get mugged. Wow, what a day. A 12 second margin with 5.1. Finally, will that be enough? In which case, I've got to ask you, Ian, who's your pick from this group? Oh, a million dollar question right now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with what I said before off air to you. My money was on Cosnefoy, so I'm going to stick with that pick. Good man. I want Marijn van der Berg to win it. Whether he will or not is anybody's guess. And you might have a few others as well that, uh, that come and uh, join the fun. Let's wait and see. They're doing a great job of neutralising this. And van der Berg, did he do too much on that climb? He, uh, he actually looks like he's not even mouth breathing for the time being, which is magnificent. 12 second margin with uh, 4.6 kilometres to go and panic raining down here. And nobody's uh, got any kind of alliance formed out of this group. It's very difficult to find somebody who's prepared to work with you at a, day, at, at a moment such as this, Ian. It is interesting move from there. Toyn's just not following his teammate through. They're dropping down now on that big, wide main road next to the water that we've seen on the previous laps. A slight, slight headwind today for these riders, so it's going to make it tough on the front of that group, but easy in the wheels. And can anyone from that chasing group bridge across? But it looks unlikely right now. It does, with four kilometres to go in 15 seconds. They're still thinking about it. And... Uh... The, the problem is they're all thinking about it at different times, Ian, and uh, you've got to have a, a proper cohesive fighting force if you're going to make the bridge, if you don't have the power of, uh, uh, of the likes of Jefferson Chapeda. He's got a little bit of everything about him, you know, the uh, former Pan American champion, 28 years of age, the Ecuadorian. The way he came over here for uh, Kai Rural and he's sharing the duty. They're almost like a team time trialing unit at the moment, and I guess they've kind of got to be. 17 seconds they hold with three and a half to go. I think it's a, a, a game that's been played.
We have a group up front, and you can see now that the heart of the chase, I'm afraid, is stalling. So we've got him. Benoit Cosnefoy, Kenton Hermans, Marijn van der Berg, Tim Wellens, Dylan Turns, Joseph Blackmore, and Jefferson Chapeda are out front. They've got 18, 19 seconds. It'll be over 20 before you know it, with about three to go. Well, we've still got one climb. It's uh, kind of a drag, really. The uh, <laughs> Not in emotional terms. Uh, the S bogged for right, sir. <laughs> you couldn't describe this day any any bit more badly, to be honest. It has been fabulous. Action stations from the very beginning. I'm almost breathless, Ian. We, we've had no chance even to sort of ponder much beyond the action, and that's a great thing. It's been full gas since they hit these finishing the circuits. Just unbelievable, as we see <laughs> now. Just a little bit of impetus coming out of this chasing group. They can look behind and visually see that gap back to the chasers. They can see as Vandenberg just continues with the effort off the front of this one. And uh, Cepeda doesn't want to take it up. Vandenberg just riding away stealthily right now. <laughs> They've got to be careful that uh, they don't end up getting mugged here. Dylan Turns just uh, sitting in front of uh, his team. Is uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, Dylan turns in front of his teammate uh, Joseph Blackmore at the moment. I don't know if he's going to try and slingshot him off the ro up the road. Blackmore um, has shown a great deal of urgency within his game today. They are not giving Marijn van der Berg the respect I think he is due at the moment. 20 seconds back to the pack, marginal here, three or four seconds. Who's got some power within this group, Ian, to deny him? He's uh, he's got a margin, slim one. Not 100% sure who has got the firepower to bring him back right now. He's got a decent advantage right now. The only thing is, once he turns right down here, it basically drags all the way to the line. Just eases ever so slightly with 200 meters to go, but taking full advantage of the camera motorbike and that gap going out to the chasers as they just looking around, flicking elbows, no one coming through with any real impetus. And Vandenberg, is he going to ride away with this one? It looks like he might have a great chance. Kosnefoy came to the front. He's done a lot of work today. Started off as favourite, never won it. The last four editions, third, eighth, second and third. And uh, to my mind, Marijn van der Berg said he got a kick, showed it on the hills, and right now he's kicking sand in everybody else's fa faces. He's uh, going to see the flam rouge. He's in the S's already. He's dealing with the most difficult part of this last sequence. He's kind of dealt with that right now. It starts to flatten out here. I think he's stolen it. This is fantastic. From a small group, we get a winner. We've said that so often. They're going to try try and pick him up right now. There's a little bit of pace about the chase and uh, they're starting to lean upon each other. Dylan Turns come through. Is it Joe Blackmore? Couldn't quite see. There's the Flamme Rouge. Can Marijn van der Berg bring this one home? This would be fabulous, Ian. It certainly was. He just stole that gap, just ghosted off the front oh. of this group and it's... Uh... Joseph Blackmore on the front, desperately trying. Is he just going to run out of gas? They've still got a good two, three hundred metres of climbing to go until it does begin to flatten off. A great job by Blackmore right now to try and bring this one back for his team leader, Toynes. All right, Van der Berg, last 500 metres. Uh, it, it is four turns, but Benoit Cosnefoy could also strike here. Let's wait and see. Don't discount Chapeda at the back either. This gap is still there, and uh, Marijn van der Berg is just starting to... The shoulders are starting to roll, and Joseph Blackmore has been like a train here. Kenton Hermans ready to go over the top. Tim Vellens also here, clever, clever rider. And it is the 500-metre marker where, stand clear of the yellow line, there's a train coming through right now. But who's it going to be? There is Blackmore on the front. He comes out of the saddle being traced as we we stand at the moment by Kenton Hermans. Hermans in second place, has a check over his shoulder. Tim Wellens is also here. Hermans can't do it. Chapeda has a, a, a brief look as they come through the heat haze. Still Joseph Blackmore on the front. Watch Chapeda. He's waiting for a jump here. Uh, the man from Cairo Rural. It would be a famous victory for him if he can possibly get there. Kenton Hermans can't resist anymore, can he? And indeed elsewhere. Finally folding through, he goes for it, does he? Goes back into the saddle, can't get there. Tim Wellens picks it up, Blackmore's here as well. Also Cos de Foix. oh, I think he's got there. Brilliant at work. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to have the heart and sometimes you may have a bag of that. And quite frankly, there's a hole in it in the end. 
Marijn van der Berg so, so brave, but Benoit Costefois in charge of his destiny. In the end, it was about timing, and Benoit Costefois had it. Michael Matthews comes across the line just to prove what might have been. Oh, my life. What a day we have had. Total attritional racing over a whole sequence of climbs. They may not have been the Alps, but this feels like Everest. Conquered and dispatched by Benoit Cosnefois. How fabulous was that, Ian? What a final kilometre, a huge, huge turn from Joseph Blackmore to bring Vandenberg back. And it was quite interesting that Vandenberg persisted with that one. You just say on paper, he's the fastest from that group. But given the gap that he just kind of stealthily got on that main road on the way back to Overizer, that he just continued with the effort, but then was just brought back on that final climb. Blackmore had the power to continue over the top of the climb and do a huge lead out for his team leader, Dylan Toynes. And it looked right up until that final 50, 60 metres, although Toynes was going to take that one. But in the end, Cosnefoy finally gets his win at Brabant's appeal. Absolutely love that. Talk us through this, Ian. Joseph Blackmore on the front just when you thought he was going to have to peel off and end his effort, he got up out the saddle and went once again. There it was, Toynes leading out on the left. He started the sprint. Quinton Herman's nothing left, just got up out the saddle, had to sit back in it, and it was Cos de Foix that just able to come off the wheel of Toynes in the last kind of 50, 60 metres and wins comfortably in the end. Coulda, shoulda won it last year. This year, he lived up to favoured status. Brilliant. Got the right group and dominated it at the very last. Well, I absolutely love that. What a great day's racing in. Yeah, a beautiful day in uh, Overizer, sun on the riders' backs, and uh, what a race. As you see there, the head-on shot. Cosnefar was able to stay in the wheel for the longest and come up on the barriers out of the wind until literally kind of 60, 70 metres to go and overjoyed with that win. Toyn's in second, Wellen's in third. What a podium. <laughs> Amazing podium. And uh, issuing his thanks back to base. Well, the captain, AG2 a la Mondial, have had back to back wins here. They must feel like they own the place. Well, Two. that was wonderful. Sorry. Two brilliant performances back to back from the uh, Decathlon AG2 Le Mondial team at this race. I just wonder ever so slightly, it would have been a huge call on the road from Toynes and Blackmore to kind of swap roles in that position. Obviously, the youngster from the development team coming up onto the, the, the full team today. But he looked very, very strong, and he's a very, very fast finisher. Perhaps he had more in the tank, but very difficult as we see the top ten there. Benoit Cosmofire takes it ahead of Dylan Turns and Tim Vellens. That's your podium. Joseph Blackmore, brilliant today, ahead of Cepeda, ran out the top five. Hermans van der Berg, Michael Matthews leading home the rest.